Yeah. Randy Robinson and Life Today TV. I have Pastor Rick Bazette from New Life Church near Little Rock, Arkansas with me. I appreciate you being here. Glad to be here. And uh, Rick is part of the Ark Churches. Mm -hmm. uh, That's right. Making a lot of headway across the land. Really building some great churches that are really ministering to people and, and getting them out to minister to others. So that's very cool. You have a story about evangelism that, that really changed your life, and I think it's a powerful yeah. story. So give me the short version of that. You know, back in the day, I was a professional golfer, and that was really all I knew to do, but I knew how to do. But this story changed my passion from playing golf to wanting to be in the ministry. I was... After I gave my heart to Christ about six months later, I wanted to witness to somebody. Yeah. I didn't know how to do that. And I thought of this man who was like a dad to me. His name was Smitty. And, uh, but I didn't know what to tell him. He was a rugged type guy. And, uh, but I called him on the phone one night, intimidated, I'll admit that. But he answered the phone, and I said, Smitty, i got to tell you about something. And he said, what is it? And I said, well, go to another phone because I knew he was. Uh, back in those days, you could hang up one phone and go to another phone. And, but we got disconnected, and I chickened out to call him back and then I went to sleep and around midnight I would guess I woke up and I felt the Lord the impression of God and people that know me know I don't throw those terms out much but I know that was one of those moments where he was speaking he said I told you to call him and I called Smitty back on the phone and he answered the phone and he said what do you want you woke me up he was mad at me I said Smitty look I gave my heart to Christ almost a year ago half a year ago and, uh, and I wanted to tell you about it and, and he started crying on the phone huh. and uh, but I knew he wasn't crying because he would never cry and, uh, and then he dropped the phone picked it back up I said Smitty are you okay he said man my friend at work has been praying for me I know I need Christ and when you said it he said Rick I want him and I said, okay. So I, I, I prayed with him. I messed up the prayer a little bit. I'd never done that. Mm -hmm. You know, you pray with somebody, they repeat after you. Yeah, I think yeah. he prayed. I repeated after him. That's the whole thing. Yeah. But eventually, I led him to Christ. And the last thing I said to him, I said, Smitty, in a week and a half, I'm going to be home. And when I get home, I'm going to come and see you. And a week and a half later, I was at my house, and my mom and my dad were acting funny. And, uh, and my mom said, Rick, we couldn't call you because you were playing in some golf tournaments, but I want to let you know. A week and a half ago, Smitty was on his way to work, and he had a massive heart attack in his car, and he died right there on Plank Road in Baton Rouge. Right. And uh, when the phone bills came out later the next month, we compared my phone call to when he died, and we realized it was around three or four, maybe five hours after I called him on the phone right. that he was in heaven, and I almost didn't call him. Right. So that just changed the way I view life. How, how did it change the way you view other people now? You know, it's just like you see everybody as a candidate to go to heaven if you'll tell them. Hmm. Even if you don't know what to say, it's worth a shot at it. You get and, rejected? Uh, yeah, I get rejected. Mm -hmm. I'm not the best soul winner in the <laughs> world, but I try a lot. Yeah. And I, I like it. I, what, 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 okay, and what do you, you're a pastor now. Yeah. So, you know, I'm assuming you preach on this from time to time. Yeah. What do you... Actually, that instigated people? my calling yeah. because it was after that that I wanted to do this more and more. And, and, uh, and somehow, I'm pretty hard-headed, yeah. so that was the way that God got my attention about being in the ministry. But I believe, I believe that moment that did it all for me. So what do you tell Christians who think, man, I, I can't just call up some guy and well, I don't know, I wouldn't even know what to say? Well, you know, I don't know. I don't have a packaged answer, but I will say that you, you might be right. You may not do a great job. But if you love them, you qualify. Yeah. A lot of times people just hate evil. But the scripture says love must be sincere. Mm -hmm. Then hate evil. Uh, you know, if somebody knows you love them, yeah. you can get away with a lot. You can mm -hmm. make some mistakes. Uh, just be real with them. Admit when you, you make a mistake around them. But let them know that Christ changed your life. And tell them they'll be a great Christian. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good line. Hey, you'd make a great Christian. <laughs> And they, they, they'll perk up and listen a little bit. Hmm. Now, did you keep playing golf for a while there? <laughs> yeah, I did. I ended up uh, in a golf tournament. Uh, I was supposed to, I, was, I signed a contract to play on the Asian tour. And, uh, but when I signed this contract, the only way I could get out of it was to get injured. And did you want to get out of it? No, I wanted to play. You want to play? But I knew that God had called me into the ministry. <laughs> so okay. I signed that contract, and I knew it was the wrong thing to do. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, I signed it. And then the next tournament I was in in Orlando, uh, my golf ball was up against the root in this tournament. And when I hit the shot, 
it broke the club, it broke my wrist, and the club swung up and hit me in the head and knocked me out. Wow. That's how God has to speak to me. I told you I was hard. <laughs> so now you're out of your contract? No, I was out of the contract, yeah. And I still resisted. I went into business. I was just running. You know, being in the ministry just looked like uh, something I could I could never do. Mm. And maybe I was right then, and maybe I'm still right. But, no, that's but, the kind God likes to use. Well, I'll tell you. Uh, you know, b the ministry back in those days was, was not like it is now. Uh, you know, the modern effort of ministry it's much more people that are like you and I and common people. And, uh, and it's awesome to know that God can use you without having to become somebody that you could never be good at becoming. So what year did you become the pastor of New Life? Yeah, we planted that church 11 years ago, 2001, so, February 2000. the 4th. That was a big day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what's happened in the last since then? You know, uh, we've grown. Uh, we started out with uh, 508 people at our very first service. Well, that's great because I didn't know anybody in the state really? except for one family who introduced me to another family, and, and then we had that first service. But then the next weekend it was th 350, and then the third weekend it was 300. It's like the Gideon's <laughs> revival was going the wrong way. And, uh, but it's, it's stabled out there, and it continued to grow. And We've had 25,000-plus decisions for Christ. That's amazing. And we've had 15,000-plus water baptisms. What are you doing different that uh, some of the churches that are dwindling, because they say that the church in America is losing influence and fewer people are going, you know, and I, I know there's studies out there, but that's not the case with you. Yeah, I mean, the average church has 80 people in it, and uh, but you know what? There are a lot of churches that are figuring it out. Uh, I believe when we started our church, it was a lot easier than churches before that. Uh, because there was no one really coaching people, no one mentoring. Mm -hmm. By the time we started, there were a lot of books that were written, mm -hmm. a lot of people saying, hey, do not ever do this. Make sure you go this way. And uh, I think what we're doing is what a lot of churches are doing that are growing. We, we, uh, you know, we, people want to bring their friends. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. uh, how often do the people that attend your church bring a friend with them to church? The right. average person in America and the average church it's once, maybe twice a year. But in the growing churches, it's every six weeks. Yeah, we call them uh, lilies and poinsettias. They bring them at Easter and Christmas, right? Exactly. <laughs> right? That's what our pastor calls them. I'm using that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's your that's, And that's maybe Mother's pastor. Day. What would you call that? Mo I, I don't know. Oh, okay. I'll ask this weekend. Yes. <laughs> so, very good. Find out. Well, very cool. Uh, what's your church website in case anybody wants to it's listen Life to this? It's TV. newlifechurch.tv. Yes. And the ARC Association you're real mm -hmm. involved in? Yeah. Uh, is online too. Yeah, they've got, I know they've got. You can some see that on our web, website. Okay. And uh, man, the ark is great because we're helping pastors plant churches, and we're helping churches turn around. Yep. and uh, it's, it's a great network of people, a lot of friends. Yep, great network to check out. If you're involved in a church, want to be involved in a church, want to maybe change some of the things you're doing so that you can do what Pastor Rick's doing, and that's just reach people. With the love of God, check it out and uh, check out Rick when he's on Live Today, lifetoday.org. Thanks for being with us. Thanks a lot.